Hi, this is Akovia. Today I want to go over some poster creation basics. Um, we're getting a lot of denials for some very basic stuff, so I just want to cover some of the basics. I'm going to start with an image I just randomly downloaded from Google. And you can tell right off the bat, it's not quite our dimensions. So this should be a red flag. But regardless, people will take an image like this, and I want to show you the wrong way to create a poster so you can identify when you're doing it the wrong way. Here is the way I think a lot of people are trying to attack this. They'll see this. It looks like a decent image at the resolution it is. They like the picture, so they'll just crop out that image and then resize it to fit our dimensions. Now obviously if you've taken any time to read the rules this text is not allowed, this text is not allowed and this you could leave if you want a tagline. I prefer not to have them and none of these logos. But people take this, they'll scale it and change the aspect ratio by unlinking the aspect ratio and then just type in the dimensions that they want, scale it, and they'll upload it. And obviously it's breaking just about every rule that we have. Um, let me talk about edges real quick. Now a lot of people work with this white background and that looks fine. You can't see any problems with the edges. I mean, I'm not I'm just even ignoring the fact that this is stretched now, not the correct aspect ratio, but one thing at a time. So if you're using GIMP, you can create shortcuts or use the view menu and change your background color. Oh, looky there. That's not good. So people won't check the edges and they'll upload this and then we have to deny it for this white line along the edge. Um, it happens in all colors and all posters. Just you need to take the time to check your edges. I can't say it enough. Uh, every time we do posters for moderate posters there's always a few, always, almost every single day that we have to deny because someone didn't check their edges. It's frustrating for you and for us. So please take the time change your background it only takes a couple seconds you can check it against different colors if you like and uh, but usually black and white and maybe even a gray is fine for checking poster edges you should use a few more colors as stated in the rules if you're doing clear art or clear logos anything with transparency so this is wrong this is just bad the first way I would attack this, let's get out of here. Now when I'm dealing with anything that's solid color, I always hit a black background. It just seems to bring out more edge problems, but then I'll check it against white or gray later. So the first thing I want to do, if I like this image, I found this somewhere and I want to find a better one, hopefully in a better resolution. The first thing I would do is I'm going to start like they did. And I'm going to, this is basically what I want. So I'm going to save this image. And oh, I did this before. Let's see. We'll call it find. Sure. Call it whatever you like. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this image in Google search to try and find similar images. So I'm going to go to images, go to avatar, and see what I got. The first thing I would do is turn on search tools and start with large. See what I can find. I'm not really finding it right off the bat. I could scroll and scroll, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little tool here and I'm going to upload an image. Choose a file and we call this 
find. So let's put that in there. Now, as you can see, it says small or medium, but there has no exact matches in large. So the first place you check is visually similar images. Let's make sure this is set to large again. And what do we have here? All right, that's French, but that is a clean image of the right dimensions, bigger than so we can crop out the correct size. You always want to look for images bigger than our 1,000 wide by 1,426 tall. And if you can go even bigger, it gives you more freedom to work and makes it even cleaner. So this is actually going to work. You can keep hunting and see if you can find any without the extra text or in the right language. Um, I did this a little earlier. I didn't have any luck. The only image like this is this French one um, that looks good, but we can actually work with this. So I'm going to save image. It's our French poster, sure. And save it. All right. So let's go back into GIMP. And I can just bring in my new poster. All right, now let me show you how to properly crop your image. What I do is I've set up presets for cropping. And what this allows me to do is it makes it really easy to compose what I want in the image for the correct aspect ratio. So for a fan art poster, oops, let me go to my crop tool. What's my crop tool? and I have a preset for fan art poster. All right, and what this does, is it sets the aspect ratio 500 to 713. That is the correct aspect ratio for our posters. Um, I have someone looking into how to set this up in Photoshop, but in GIMP it's as simple as entering that and then saving, saving it as a preset, call it what you like. But now that I have that, uh, I should mention, if you don't want to use presets, you can actually just type in the proper size here and type 1000 by 1426. Now this should work in both software. Oops. I've never used this. Maybe this doesn't work. Oops. Maybe you gotta create it first. That's probably it. Yeah. Mm. That isn't working for me. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to my preset. What that allows me to do is I can drag, and you see how I can't make the sides wider, or it keeps everything in the exact aspect ratio that I need. So I'm going to take as much of the picture as I can. Make sure that we're at 1426 is ours. I could probably get rid of a little bit, but it just won't matter at that point. Not enough to get rid of this text, and I don't want to lose that much detail anyway. So now that I've dragged out my crop, I can kind of center it where I want. If I did want to make it smaller and this was a really, really big image, then I could do something like that. Anyway, so I'm going to crop it. What that does, you can see it's still not our dimensions, but since it's in the correct aspect ratio, I, if I scale it now, leaving this locked, the aspect ratio locked, if I type in a thousand here, it'll automatically give me the correct aspect ratio here. You should always double check. Sometimes this can be a pixel off one way or the other. Um, I'm not quite sure how it calculates it, but just visually verify before you keep going. Otherwise, when you go to upload it, you'll find your pixel off and you have to change it again then. So I always just double check. Now when we scale it, we've got the perfect size poster to work with double check my edges right off the bat 
and my edges look clean except for that but I'll get rid of that all right so now you know how to properly crop your image and you know how to search for better images that's the two key things um, searching spend more time searching uh, it'll save you a whole lot of time in the actual program if you hunt down really good images it makes your life so much easier but anyway I'm not going to go into a full-blown tutorial on how to fix this but I'll show you some quick basics in GIMP um, there's a tool called resynthesize um, comes with some presets called heel selection is the one we're going to be using um, in Photoshop I believe it's called content aware fill and somebody I'm sure you can find um, plenty of tutorials on YouTube or elsewhere on how to use that filter but in here uh, most of this is going to be pretty simple oops not the one I want it what we're going to do is we're just going to select these elements and I'm going to bring up this filter called heel selection and I'm going to sample from 50 pixels all around and random fill. If you leave it on random fill, it'll try to do its best to match what was from around it to create a seamless patch, basically. Now, sometimes you don't have 50, 50 pixels around without some other element going to get in the way and be used to put in here. So what we can do if we want to double check, I know we're fine here, but what you can do is you can grow your selection. We'll grow it by 50 and see our sample area. And we're fine. It's not picking up any other text. So we're all good there. With those settings, and those are the default settings, and in most cases that'll work fine, but you can adjust this if you need to. So for this instance, all around is good, random, and done. And we can do this one. Done. And this one, I don't know, 50 pixels probably won't get it, but I'm going to try. Yep, no big deal. We can just run our filter right on the extra there. Now you can see there's some artifacts here. If we just use our heel brush, which is this guy, take a sample from above by hitting control and then painting across it, it gets rid of a lot of that. Now, let's try this. Pretty good. Get rid of this little extra bit here. Same thing. You can see it's a little different. And we can use our heel brush to kind of clean that up and make it blend a little better. Now we're zoomed in really pretty good. So, and on this one, we'll try it again. Not bad. Actually, I don't know if it needs, yeah, it could use a little bit. And you can spend the time and really kind of tweak this to your liking. But I always try to get rid of the hard edges at least. And see if you zoom in, you can kind of see a little bit of pixelation there. And we can kind of get rid of that with the heel tool. Now, well, this one's probably going to be the tough one. So, let's see what we can do. We're just going to give it a shot. Look at that. Almost perfect. A little bit. I don't know if the heel brush, oops, heel brush will work on this or not. Let's take a look. You might need to use the clone tool in, in some places. Looks like this could, I don't 
don't think this is going to work here, but eh, not bad. smudge there and could probably even use a little bit of sharpen let's see get our rate up a little eh, not too bad I could work on that a lot a lot more I could spend a whole lot of time trying to get it just right and I encourage you to do so but in this tutorial I'm not going to go overboard. And we can kind of heal up some of the, this area. And that actually looks pretty good. Now we have a good avatar poster. But there's a couple little things I'd like to do. Lastly, it almost looks a little washed out in spots. I always try to check my levels and according to this graph we're actually pretty close I'm going to tweak it see that just that little bit just a little it gives it a little bit more pop and a little bit more depth and this is just bringing the blacks up and this would bring the whites up. See if I go crazy with it you can see the difference. Blacks. So I'm just bringing it up a little bit. See if it can be helped with a little white adjustment. Much better. So there you have it. That's a decent poster. We had uh, actually last thing I don't like this stuff on the edges here when I don't need to have it. Oops. So I'm going to use the clone tool and just kind of darken that out. And get rid of these little white spots. Just makes me happier. All right. And that would be an acceptable poster to upload. So I'm hoping you learned a few things here on what we expect and how to go about. Uh, accomplishing that to get good quality we all have the same goal we all want good artwork to use in our media centers if you don't really care about the artwork this probably isn't a place for you and there's plenty of places to upload if you want to upload at all or you could just if you don't care about the high quality you can put it in your media center and use it and it doesn't need to be shared so don't feel obligated and to go through all this if you don't think it's necessary but we want high quality images in our database and unfortunately um, we have to turn away a lot of images because they just aren't up to snuff but we will try and help you any way we can to get you there I hope you enjoyed this thanks again